Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. It is good to see you today on this uh, fifth Sunday of Easter. Um, what a glorious day today is. It's a little chilly out, but it is nice. And so I want to just pause for a moment before I forget to wish all of our mothers happy Mother's Day. Uh, I wish that uh, you were here so you could all get a flower uh, but I hope this slide here on the screen will will uh, uh, serve as a happy uh, compromise. Uh, you get a little flower uh, virtually instead. It is good to see you today. Uh, just have a couple of uh, real fast uh, announcements. Uh, the Board of Elders uh, is meeting. We uh, have met a couple of times and we're continuing to discuss and prayerfully plan for our reentry into this uh, glorious worship space uh, sometime in the future, whenever that happens to be. So I in in covet your prayers for us all um, and uh, that, uh, that uh, the Lord would impart us uh, with some wisdom. Uh, also, I want to note that uh, I don't have the exact date. I neglected to look it up, but you might want to call them and say a happy anniversary anyway. But Bob and Mary Jo Buss, a either just celebrated or will be celebrating their 63rd wedding anniversary. That means they could be my parents. So uh, I mentioned that to uh, Carol Johnson the other day, and she said, uh, I could be your parent too. So, <laughs> But uh, happy anniversary, uh, Bob and uh, Mary Jo. Uh, I would like to read for you just a wonderful call to worship. It is an older edition called Contemporary Introits for the Revised Church Calendar, and these were written by Leslie Brandt. If you don't know who Leslie Brandt is, he is the guy who wrote the little book um, that, was, that was popular many years ago called Psalms Now, or it's a paraphrase of the Psalms. And this was his call to worship, or his intro it, for this, this Sunday, the fifth Sunday of Easter. Clap your hands, stamp your feet, let your bodies and your voices explode with joy. God is not some human concoction. He is real and he is here. Despite all our attempts to rationalize him out of existence, he is in our world and he reigns over our universe. Let us recognize his presence and fill the air with his praises. Amen. And so, dear friends, we gather together today in, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So please read with me responsively our invocation. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Oh, that day when free from sin. 
As we examine our own life, we realize that though Christ has set us free from the bondage of sin and death, that we still, from time to time, stumble and fall into sin. So it is good that we pause at this time to confess our sin to God, our gracious Heavenly Father. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God. Though we have rebelled against Him, let us renounce our willingness and and our willfulness and ask his mercy by confessing our sin in penitence and faith. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. Jesus therefore says to you all, I forgive you. Amen. Darkest. 
thank you, Lord, for leading us, for guiding us, for being our shepherd. We thank you, dear Lord, that you have forgiven us and that we can look to you during both the good times as well as the bad because we know, dear Lord, you have promised that you will lead us home. And for that, we give you thanks. Lord, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. And so, dear Lord, we ask that you would grant that we may love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world in our day today, that our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found, which is you and your kingdom and our heavenly inheritance. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for this fifth Sunday of Easter is recorded in the book of Acts, chapter 6. Now in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenistics arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. Imagine that. There was complaining in the church even then. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Porcius, and and Nicar, and Timon, and Parmius, and Nicholas, a, a proselyte of Antioch, These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. And some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the free men, as it was called, and of the Cretans, and of the Alexandrians, and of those of, of uh, Cilia and Asia, rose up and, and disputed with Stephen. And Stephen said, You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in hearts and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, 
whom you have now betrayed and murdered, you who received the law as delivered by the angels and did not keep it. Now when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice, and they stopped their ears, and they rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he cried out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2, also our sermon text for today. 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning with verse 2. Like newborn infants... Long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. And you come to him, as you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious. You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it, for it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumbled because they disobeyed the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you, had, once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Holy Gospel for this fifth Sunday of Easter is recorded in the book of St. John, chapter 14. Please rise. And if you're at home, please rise. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak of my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or else, 
believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us confess our common Christian faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our hymn of the day, There is a Redeemer. Grace to you and peace, dear friends, from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text today, as I mentioned a moment ago, is our epistle reading. And in particular, I'd like us to meditate upon these words. As you come to him, a living stone, rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Let us pray. 
These are thy words, O Lord, help us and sanctify us in the truth. Thy word is truth. Amen. During um, these Sundays of Easter, our focus has been upon living, uh, living our life in the light of our inheritance, or living in the hope of our inheritance. Living our life each and every day, knowing that though we live in a world that is very troubled at this time, people living in fear, people very concerned, and rightly so, that uh, we, as children of God, don't need to worry because our Lord Jesus is preparing a place for us, as he said in our gospel reading today. Even as Stephen was being stoned, he looked up into heaven and he saw his heavenly dwelling. Uh, we too, we are living in the hope of our inheritance each and every day. And today our theme happens to be upon living as holy priests. You see, God has given us gifts. And the goal of these gifts is our spiritual growth. That is the goal. Our spiritual growth as Christians, our spiritual growth as holy priests living in the hope of their inheritance. We have a spiritual life and it is only as because it is a gift of God for Christ's sake. It's nothing that we have done ourselves. It is nothing that we even deserve. Spiritual growth is begun by God and it's, God, and it's God's creation of our spiritual life. St. Paul tells us in Ephesians 1 that when we believed in Jesus Christ, that we were sealed with a deposit, the deposit, the Holy Spirit, who is, a, who is our guarantee of our hope to come, our resurrection to come, our inheritance to come even. And so you see our spiritual growth is begun by God's creation of spiritual life. Peter tells us in verse 10 of our text today, that once we had not received mercy, once we were not a people, once we had not received mercy, once upon a time before Jesus, before Jesus came into our heart, before Jesus came into our life, we were lost. We were without hope. We truly were in bondage to sin, unable to free ourselves. That's what we were once upon a time. Once we were no people. Once we had not received mercy, that is, we were by nature spiritually dead. But here's the good news. God sent his son as the chosen and precious living stone that Peter mentions in our text today. God sent his son as the chosen and living stone. And he is called the living stone because he is the one who died for our sin. He is the one who rose victorious and now he lives forever. And also because he gives us true eternal life. After all, as he said, he is going to prepare a place for us. So what do we have to worry about? What do we have to worry about? Because we are living in the hope of our inheritance. Because he is going to prepare a place for us. You see, through faith in this living stone we become ourselves living stones, as he says here in verse 5. We ourselves are become living stones, as he put it here. You yourselves are like living stones being built together, built up as a spiritual house. We are being built as a house is constructed, as the, the stones on this great wall behind me have been built and, and locked together. You and I are being built and locked together as living stones with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone. He is the plumb line. He is the one who is setting the standard for our lives as holy priests. And so as living stones, we rejoice that God has made us into a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. We rejoice in that. So Leslie Brandt in that intro that he gave us this morning, he says, clap your hands, shout for joy. And we have every reason to clap our hands and shout for joy because 
We are now God's people. Once we weren't God's people, but now we are God's people. Spiritual growth. Spiritual growth has begun by God. Spiritual growth is also furthered by God's uh, preservation of our spiritual life. It is not only because we are being built up as a spiritual house by God that we believe in Christ. We says we recite in the creed that we believe in the Holy Spirit. Luther's explanation of the, that third article says, I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ or come to him, but that the Holy Spirit calls me by the gospel. He enlightens, enlightens me with his gifts and he sanctifies me and keeps me in the one true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the entire Christian church and keeps it in the one true faith. Therefore, it is only because we are being built up as a spiritual house by God that we can believe in him because it is all his doing. You see, left to ourselves, we would be numbered with those who do not believe. So this is God's gift to us, his gift of spiritual growth. But he also has a goal for us. He also has a goal for our spiritual growth. Not that we just stay at home and, and stay in, and, and in seclusion, quarantining ourselves. Yes, we may have to do that for a time because of this virus, but that is not God's, that was never God's intent for us to, for our entire life to, to self-quarantine. He, instead, he wants us to be out and about, living as holy priests. And that is the goal of our spiritual growth. You see, the goal is not that we may escape our dependence upon God. You see, the old Adam, he tells us that it is a shameful thing that we believe in Jesus. The old sinful Adam tries to convince us that we don't need God, we don't need his help, we don't need his assistance, that we, that we don't need to trust in Jesus' substitutionary work that earns for us God's favor and he also tries to tell us that we can stand on our own two feet. That's what the old Adam tries to tell us. He tells us it's a shameful thing to put our hope and our trust in God. You see, a subtle variation of unbelief suggests that Jesus did his part, and now we must do his part, which is actually false. We must not, we, not that we must do our part to be saved, because if we were to yield to this idea, we would be disobeying God's word. Rather, the goal is that we, make, make, that we may make known God's wonderful deeds. The goal of our spiritual growth is that we share. The goal of our, of our spiritual growth is that we tell one another and that we make known to everyone that we come in contact with God's wonderful deeds. We make them known as we advertise. As we advertise. Look, listen to what he says here in verse 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's why he saved us. This is why this is his goal for us, for our spiritual growth, that we may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you and me out of darkness into his marvelous light. That we tell others that once I was lost, but now I see. We tell, we tell others that yes, there, we are concerned about the effects of this pandemic that is wreaking havoc on our world today but hey you know what i've got a solution i've got an answer because none of us are getting out of here alive anyway but i've got an answer where you can have an uh, you can have this wonderful hope of an inheritance to come where jesus has gone before us to prepare a place for us he said it himself in my father's house are many rooms and i go to prepare a place for you and so, yes, 
This pandemic is wreaking havoc in our world and our society, but the hope that we have is our inheritance. Yes, we do our best to try not to infect one another, but uh, if it's God's will to call us home, it's God's will to call us home. And, and that is the wonderful hope of this marvelous light that he has called us to. That for Christ's sake, this light now shines upon you. This light now shines upon me. And that's part and parcel of what it means to, be, to live as a holy priest. To live as a holy priest. Or as, as to put it as Peter put it here. To proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. You see, we are to make known when depending on God's grace more and more, we selflessly offer spiritual sacrifices to God. We selflessly go out into the marketplace and offer spiritual sacrifices to God, which are motivated by our love for God and our love for one another. And these spiritual sacrifices that we make in the marketplace, again, is to say, hey, you want, to, you, want, you want assurance of an incredible inheritance of life to come? You want assurance that one day, though we all will die, one day God is going to raise you from the dead? You want that assurance? Let me tell you about the excellencies of him who called you and me out of darkness and into his marvelous light. That, dear friends, is part and parcel of what it means to live as a holy priest. So may we always thank God for his undeserved gifts of spiritual life and growth. And may we likewise confidently obey his will for our lives and make known to the world his wonderful deeds in Christ Jesus our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk let us now come before our Lord God seeking his mercy with confidence that his grace will be sufficient for all of our needs this day almighty father everlasting God your Son was, has revealed you to us as our merciful Lord. Give to us your Holy Spirit that we may believe in him whom you have sent and do the greater work that he has told us that we will do in his name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you have promised to build up your, your church to be a holy priesthood. That your people might offer the spiritual sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving acceptable to you. Bless your church and all congregations. And bring them back together again. Bless all pastors who proclaim Christ to us. Bless all church workers and those preparing for full-time church vocations that your church may be supplied with faithful leaders and servants of your word 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, your power brought all things into being, and, and still you preserve what you have made. Bless our President, the Congress of the United States, our Governor, and all elected and appointed civil servants, that they may honor you and your purpose, establishing order and justice, encouraging virtue and protecting all life. Give wisdom and moderation to them in their leadership for the well-being of the nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O merciful Father, you have compassion upon the sick and those in need and have promised not to ignore them in their afflictions. Turn back the pandemic across the globe and give relief. Bless the sick with healing. Those who suffer with strength and patience and bless the dying with peace. Hear us on behalf of those, dear Lord, that we name to you in our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you have established the home and you have blessed those who show us your love. Bless all mothers and the children in their care. Bless all families and make their homes places of blessing and love, where your word is spoken, where forgiveness reigns and love is displayed. Give us good examples to inspire youth to all that is good and pure and to seek after these things. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have given us the wisdom of faith that through the Spirit we may know your Son to be the way, the truth, and the life. Bless all those who teach us. Bless all those who learn that the goal of our knowledge may be to know Christ and to make him known. Do not let your word be bound, but let it have free course among us. Preserve those who are in isolation from idleness and instead let our minds be renewed in scripture and prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate Father, you are not aloof from the needs of this body and life and you have called us to love our neighbor in need and to give aid to the poor. Give us courage and faith that we may not fear sharing the resources you have supplied with those who live in want, especially the widowed, the orphan, and the unemployed. Let love be perfected among us to drive out selfish fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Father of an eternal mercy, you have raised up witnesses in every age and you have blessed us with those who endure suffering and even death and faithfulness to Christ. We give you thanks for those faithful saints and martyrs and we pray to make us strong when we face the day of test, that at length we may be brought with them into your joyous, the joyfulness of your presence and the glory of your of ever, everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you, O God, for your goodness in hearing the prayers of your people and granting us confidence to approach your throne of mercy. Hear us now in the name of our Lord and for his sake, through whom we pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, dear friends, 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed week, and Mother's, again, happy, happy Mother's Day. Oh